Good morning. Thank y'all for having me today. Uh, glad to be here to be able to share the word with you. So before we get into it, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear most righteous Heavenly Father, I ask you to please just hide me behind the cross today, Lord. I ask you to please just lead God and direct the service today, Father, and just fill this house with your spirit today, Lord. And just <clears throat> let it go whichever way that you want it to go today, Father. So I want you to know that we love you and we praise you and we thank you very much you've done. All my best comes, Father. Amen. Alright, so for the message today, I'm going to start by saying this. Whenever we were small children and stuff like that, we tend to act up, right? <clears throat> we tend to make bad choices and we do a lot of things we ain't supposed to do, you know? It is part of life and when we do these things, what do our parents do? I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the phrase, take it to the woodshed which means that your parents are going to take you out back and they're going to give you a whooping. They take you to the woodshed to correct you. <clears throat> it doesn't mean they stop loving you. It doesn't mean you're not their kid anymore. It just means that they love you enough to discipline you. That kind of love is unconditional. Now think about it like this as well. Whenever you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you stop being a child of the world and you become a child of God. In that moment, He becomes your Heavenly Father. He is your parent. He loves you more than we could ever comprehend. That's not changing. His love for us is still there. But what happens whenever we step out of God's will? He takes us to the woodshed. I don't know about everybody else, but for me, I needed His discipline. I needed His punishment. I went the wrong way so many times, but God is so loving, His grace is so abundant, I did not deserve it, but he gave it to us anyway. Punishment is not a bad thing. Yeah, it hurts and you feel awful while it's happening, but it's for our own good. God knows the sins that we have committed. God's punishment. God's punishment is one of the biggest blessings that we have. God's punishment is a testament to his love that he has for us. I thank God every day for when he has taken me to the woodshed, and I thank God for disciplining me. I thank God for setting me straight whenever I was running in a zigzag. It's untelling how bad off I would be if it hadn't been for God's discipline. But God loved me anyway. He set me straight anyway. And I'm here to tell you today that I claim God as my parent. I claim God as my Heavenly Father. And I claim Him because He claimed me and continues to claim me when I have been completely and totally unclaimable. <laughs> Praise God for His woodshed. Today I would like to share with you two examples of how the Lord can take you to His woodshed. Let's start by reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1-11. through 11. <clears throat> Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before, that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. For, <clears throat> for when we were come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. Nevertheless, God that comforteth those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you. And when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoiced the more. For though I made you sorry with the letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent, for I perceived that the same epistle hath made you sorry. Though it were but for a season, now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold, the selfsame thing, that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, 
What clearing of yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what vehement desire, what zeal, what revenge, in all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. <clears throat> we see in this pastor scripture that it is talking about being sorrowful in a godly manner. The person it is referring to was guilty. They were sorry. They were led to repentance. And that repentance made them more careful, more fearful of the Lord. This is the first example of how the Lord can take you to the woodshed. He can fix your heart. He makes you feel guilty for the things that you do. He makes sure that you know when and how that you have done wrong. <clears throat> this is spiritual punishment from the Lord. You know how sorrowful it makes you whenever the Lord takes you to the woodshed in this manner? I know for me, spiritual discipline makes me feel awful while it is happening, but thankful for it whenever it is over. Because this discipline really makes you think. It does give you more of a clear carefulness to yourselves and strengthens your decision making. It's like if you give somebody who can't see good a pair of glasses. Without his glasses, he's walking all over the place, bumping into everything. <clears throat> it is the same way with conviction. Before the Lord convicts you, you're just going any direction. Then when He places that conviction on you, it gives you the ability to see that the path you were going down was the wrong one, and He guides you back to the right path. This is how God's spiritual punishment works. Now to go to our next example, I'm going to be reading from Job chapter 1. <clears throat> there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, five hundred yoke of oxen, and five hundred she-asses, and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses. Everyone his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so. When the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man? One that feareth God and escheweth evil. Then, sa then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his, work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord, and there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their elder brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job, and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. They have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose, and rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and worshipped, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. 
thither. And the Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. <clears throat> now I know what you're probably thinking. Job was obedient, and he remained obedient even after all the trials that he went through and all of the loss that he had suffered. But think about it like this. What we was talking about before when we were talking about conviction being spiritual discipline. And I was referring to children, some being stubborn and, you know, <clears throat> being hard to handle. There are some children who are a little bit more stubborn and a little bit more harder to handle. So the spiritual aspect is not the only thing that happens. Sometimes it has to take a physical approach. <clears throat> Like Job stated in the passage of Scripture, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. If you run from God, He's going to chase you. If the Lord has laid a path out for you and you decide to take another path, He's going to do what it takes to get you back on His path. It's like this. If God has placed a calling on your life, the devil is going to keep putting so much garbage in your way to keep you on the wrong path that you can't even see straight. He's going to give you whatever you want if it keeps you from God. But what does God do? God sees that garbage. God sees those idols. And God sees those mortal things that is blocking you from Him. God is going to get rid of those roadblocks. God is going to take that garbage and He is going to put it in the incinerator. Because maybe whenever He removes all the things blocking your view, you can start to see things clearly. There are times whenever the Lord has to tear you down to build you back up. It does not matter which way the Lord takes you to the woodshed. But what matters is that He loves you enough to do it for you anyway. And we should thank Him and praise Him for that every day. With that, let us get a song of invitation. The altar is open. Thank you very much for having me. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Brother Bill. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, really appreciate that. That was a good message, and we appreciate you. And, yeah, I have to agree with you. There's been times when I think you should have gone to the woodshed too, back when you <laughs> little bitty hanging around the airport. <laughs> um, yeah, we, uh, we, we appreciate you and your dad both, and uh, we're just thankful. We're so thankful for you all. So I guess I'll see you guys. What time did we say now? Six? 5.30 Central. 5.30. 5.30? 5.30 Central? Okay. Well... We'll, we'll see you all here 5.30 Central next Sunday, and hopefully we'll see you Wednesday night. So we'll close it out now, and you guys, thanks for coming. Lord, we thank you for our church body. We thank you for our brothers and sisters. We ask that you will continue to bless us. You've blessed us with a minister and a son that backs him up. And we are grateful. We're really grateful. And they're both good Bible-preaching ministers. And Lord, be with each of us as we go our way, going home and wherever we may be going as we leave here. Bless us all. Watch over us. Keep us safe and keep us from harm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.